Hi everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Tech Talk Dudes. Uh, I'm Pim, and I'm here together today with uh, Ronnie de Jong. Um, as you may know, and as our listeners do know, we always talk about a lot of identity and security, and eventually, in some cases, also workplace-related stuff. Uh, and that always ha- comes to mind with um, IT, uh, IT stuff, which is just the regular within the regular IT organization, like desktops, laptops, identities, and the security bits and bytes around it, servers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but there is more than that when it comes to the story um, than just I- IoT, F- uh, IT, isn't it, Ronnie? Yeah, that's uh, that's true. Hello, everyone. And uh, yeah, it's usually talking about I- IT related uh, stuff, and uh, we are. Our organizations are trying to keep up and to make sure that the, their assets are protected. But the IT landscape doesn't exist so lonely of IT. Uh, um, and, and it's including much more. And that's also, I thought it would be interesting uh, for the audience here today to talk about securing IoT. Uh, and um, yeah, IoT is not always a common commodity. And uh, not in the first place from a security perspective, uh, and also from a business side perspective. Eh? IoT uh, does come with a lot of, of sensors, connected devices, which uh, giving us insights, data pointers, and based on those data pointers, we can monitor an, uh, a facility or production process. And we can do some predictive maintenance, or we getting insights um in in infrastructure components etc so that's 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 huge that's huge potential and uh, the number of iot devices is on the rise it's they are increasing um uh, the inter- the rise of the internet makes sure that we are hyper connected mm-hmm. and what we see and that's also kind of a trend is that uh traditionally I, IoT less, but certainly OT, it's always in a closed ecosystem. It's a closed loop. These are normally air kept. But as mentioned, we do see a trend that everything got connected. Even your personal, your car is connected with internet and will get updates over the air and you can keep track with your your app where your car is, uh, what what your battery status is of your EV. And so that that gives a lot of business potential, uh, but that comes also with a risk. Because uh, as these uh, objects and buildings are also now connected more and more, um, it allows a lot of uh, benefits when it comes to monitoring and other stuff. But it's also um, introducing a surface attack. So that, that's why uh, I thought it would be good to talking about how you are securing your OT or IoT devices. And um, yeah, when we are talking about assets, uh, one of the first thing is that we are not always have a clear picture of our uh, IT landscape or including OT, for example. Mm-hmm. So that's that's a bit of a challenge, uh, and that are trends what we are seeing here and. Yeah, how do you address these challenges? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Great story. Uh, maybe for the audience, um, and you mentioned two two terms, IoT and OT. Um, just to recap, I, IoT, those are uh, devices which are literally connected to the internet, if I may say so. Uh, and that's meaning they are living on the internet, which could be my car, which is connected, I, uh, I think um some sensors ot is literally uh, which is th- things are connect which are connected to your LAN, your local area network if i may say so is that is oh, that true? well some usually are... that's true yeah actually you can wrap it up in uh in that in a nutshell and for for better understanding i'm just sharing my screen uh oh, yeah. to, to, to elaborate on that on your uh, question eh? here you can see uh, at the right hand side uh, when it comes to IoT um, interconnected devices, which are connected to the internet or to your local network, these are more enterprise IoT. Uh, so uh, that can be your uh, equipment like uh, printers or CCTV, 
It can be um, a voice, telephone uh, systems, and other devices which are connected to your enterprise environment. Um, and that also depending on which uh, branch you are active. Uh, is it just uh, in the offices or are you in the healthcare? Yeah, so the type of devices might differ, but they are usually in an enterprise IT uh, segment or segmented network area. Yeah. Um, the OT space in the middle is more often related to industrial uh, manufacturing processes. Um, it can be objects, uh, public objects like bridges or uh, public transport metro stations etc uh, there we do have uh, ot devices or ics devices and these are yeah actually dumb devices where usually there is an, uh, a logic controller in between uh, which gives uh, instructions to the for to the sensor or to the device itself and that's very uh, isolated and very um, uh, sensitive to noise, etc. So that's something you don't want to interfere, and it's also usually agentless. Yeah, it's not not uh, proficient with an agent, for example, because it's too in, uh, intrusive. Uh, and the last um, area is the green field, and these are devices which are. Um, bit more sophisticated, but also includes a um, footprint of sensors, uh, which has their own agent, for example, as part of the operating system or even as part of the hardware, like Azure Sphere, for example, or uh, real-time OS, where you have a micro agent in there, which is sharing the data. So that's in general the distinction between IoT or enterprise IoT and OT. Check, check. Okay, that's a that's a good explanation. So everybody now knows the difference between IoT and OT. So that's great. Um, well, then looking at um, the security bits and bytes, because those things we weren't able to. Uh, well, we are not able to. Uh, in some cases, we're not able to manage those systems in a right way, or they're at least not IT attached. So there are. IoT. So, how, what what are the ways? Uh, why is it important to to protect them, Ronnie? And 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 what should I use to uh, to get those things protected and or to get the asset details uh, in a list uh, in a list so that I know are there any vulner vulnerabilities in here in this particular firmware used on um, on my Wi-Fi controller or whatsoever else? What what just yeah, that, that's a good one. And and before we dive into how to protect these uh, objects or devices, uh, first and foremost is uh, have a good understanding of your landscape. And it starts with identifying your uh, assets, and in this case, your your IoT or OT devices. And where yeah, previously or currently you're using an Excel sheet or manually uh, keeping track on it, it's it's a challenge. It's it's an hassle because um, IT or OT landscapes are more and more uh, dynamic. Um, resources will be provisioned, devices will be popping up in, in networks where you not always have control to it. So it's very, um, uh, how you say that? It's not, it's the opposite of statical, it's very dynamic. And um, that's why uh, it always start with an inventory and an ongoing inventory, I would say. And therefore, we do have some uh, approaches, uh, like using an, um, an IoT sensor, which is uh, copying your network, spanning a uh, network port, and then based on the traffic, it's scanning uh, and identifying your devices. Or if we are talking about the enterprise IoT, uh, then we are using, for example, managed uh, endpoints like a desktop or a server, where we're using the endpoint um, as a detection mechanism and having a clear understanding uh, of our inventory. And, and, but, and, the, and the endpoint could then, in that case, be, for example, my laptop? 
Exactly. If your uh, laptop is protected by, for example, Defender for Endpoint, we are able to use that agent or client to perform a network discovery. So based on the network discovery, and we are using some, some technologies, uh, we're reading the, the ARP table or doing a net, net start or even um, SNMP traffic, uh, SNMP trap, uh, authenticated or not. Um, based on that, we are able to discover your network and uh, have a clear understanding and inventory of it. And that's a first start. And uh, from there, we do see also the, the correlation between the, the objects and the devices. And it goes not only from a statical inventory, but also from a behavior perspective. And that's where the protection stage comes in. And if you see some uh, change of behavior or changing patterns, uh, we are just learning the network, um, deviations from it, um, yeah, might indicate some some potential threats, and that's all an, another uh, benefit of having a clear understanding of your network, having the inventory, and then also uh, learning your environment and based on uh, patterns or um, deviating from normal patterns, we are able to to flag these, and that's also part of our of our, yeah protection side of uh, of it. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And, and and when when we're talking about IT, uh, one of the fundamental things uh, besides strong authentication using MFA, um, using an antivirus or EDR solution, is also keeping up with your updates. And keeping up with your updates is not only for your operating system or for your software, but that's also for OT devices or IoT devices. And the challenge here is that these devices are not designed to be updated frequently and that not, that doesn't not only apply to uh, devices being used in in professional or enterprises but also in your home and network for example and the quality of updates or firmware and support of it it's not always the best and getting back to the 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 production plant or uh, monitoring uh, a bridge or uh, other traffic uh, things, these are be built for 20 or 30 year life cycle. And it's isolated normally, but they are not built to or designed to frequently receive updates. But that's also another pain point because uh, that again allows vulnerabilities and an attack surface for bad actors. And that's what, what we also have here is the capability um, to check, okay, which devices are vulnerable or less vulnerable. And you can use those insights to prioritize which devices should be updated first to reduce the likelihood of an attack. Yeah, th this is actually meaning you, you're going from A to B to C to D, and then in the end, you're still breached. You need to yeah. do it full scale uh, and make sure that you do everything right. Of course, there are some priorities as we just as you just noticed a few screens back, but it's important to do do it in all ends and not just protect a part of it because that still leaves gaps. Well, ideally do all of them, but in real world, it's not always feasible. And then just start with the high risk objects, uh, which forms a potential high risk to your environment and might lead to a uh, destruction of your production plant, for example. And that, that's what I meant. We are in IT, we are using uh, update rings, for example, uh, and then test and pilot and then go full deployment. But for the OT or IoT world, that is not working in that way. That's that's completely different approach, diff, different uh, mindset. And that's also with Defender for IoT helps you uh, to identify the vulnerabilities and then give you a priority list. Okay, if you're allowed to update them, just start with device D instead of uh, other devices. So yeah. you can also go back to your management and say, hey, we identified this. This needs to be updated as soon as possible. We have to uh, schedule a maintenance. Yeah, yeah, and then it's really planning maintenance instead of let it auto uh, patch. 
because you don't know what breaks uh, on the other end. It's exactly than just windows. Yeah. Yeah, that makes uh, that, that definitely makes sense. So that's that's actually uh, the difference eh, between IT and NOT. There are different motions of um, yeah to update to invent, and that's also we are trying to to make your life easier as an admin or responsible for OT devices. Uh, apart from that, we see the transition and shift from closed to open. Mm -hmm. uh, the ubiquitous of of uh, the presence of of IoT devices or internet connected devices, um, and then the, the the last thing is um, the 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 merge, the integration between IT and OT uh, coming together. And I can imagine, okay, Ronnie, in, interesting, but uh, how does that look like? What what options uh, I do have, and what it takes to implement? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but I'm not. I wasn't sure if you would if you would be able to show me, so I was a little bit a little bit precautious by asking it. <laughs> no, no, no. Feel free to uh, speak out loud, uh, Pim. Um, when when it comes to the uh, some basic principles, then uh, we we started with the discovery side, eh? knowing your environment, knowing what your assets have in your network, then. Um, Performing a risk analysis. Eh? What is your risk appetite when it comes to your devices? Yeah. And then um, you can prioritize and plan maintenance, as as briefly touched on. And of course, uh, the behavior. And if based on on uh, capabilities, uh, we we are able to learn your environment. And based on deviations, eh? like. You have a sensor in a certain network segment, and that should only communicate with a controller. But if the sensor is starting to communicate to an IP address um, outside of the network, that is deviating from the normal behavior that that uh, sensor is talking or communicating with that controller. Well, that might be a trigger, and that might be uh, something we want to alert and, and detect it. And based on that, we can mitigate it. And that that forms the final stage of responding to uh, deviations yeah. or attacks notif notified. Uh, uh, and yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah, no, finish the story. I, I will give it. I will. Uh, I will ask it, it to you in two minutes. <laughs> Uh, keep it, uh, keep it for me, please. And and yeah. how how does the 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 deployment infrastructure look like? Uh, as you can see here on the left hand side, we briefly touched uh, on enterprise IoT. So for enterprise IoT, we are able to use the Defender for Endpoint client to scan and, and uh, our networks. And um, yeah, as mentioned, uh, discover uh, printers or uh, voice over IP devices or other devices connected to the network. This is more the IT side, the IT side of the house. Yeah. yeah. When it comes to IoT, and by the way, Defender for Endpoint is not only for uh, the desktops or uh, laptops, it also applies for servers. Yeah? Service might also reside in a different network segment than clients, for example. Yeah. Uh, and for the rest, for OT and networks, uh, we are using or are able to use an IoT network sensor. And that IoT network sensor is performing some uh, network traffic analysis and uh, by a port mirroring or span port. And based on that, we are able to learn the network, but not interfering with the network, which is very important to OT. Yeah. And that is uh, actually the way how we um, collect all that information uh, together in Defender for IoT. Check. Okay. And okay. there is one, one remark. Uh, some customers are also uh, having needs to have this on-premise. So apart from the management console by default in the cloud, we have also a capability or an option to have a management console on premise. And for the, those specific requirements, we can also address those needs. And then you don't use the Azure portal for the insights, but you use a portal in your own network. Is that what you're saying? 
Exactly, and uh, only some updates, some uh, but Intel, for example, uh, which is real time available in the cloud in the Defender for Cloud IoT uh, portal, will need to be synchronized or comes with an update of the management portal. So there are also pros and cons whether or not deciding uh, to have the full cloud deployment or including an on premise uh, uh, monitoring console. Yeah, yeah. okay. Hey, and um, when I look at this, I see uh, Defender for Endpoint, I see Defender for IoT Network Sensor. Um, what kind of license do I actually need? What would be the recommendation to use? Because um, I assume, I'm, I'm not sure, that Defender for IoT is a separate license you need to, you need to buy? Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Um, and, and does that then rely on Defender for Endpoint integration? Do you also need Defender for Endpoint? Or is it, you can use it standalone, but the best would be to use it together with Defender for Endpoint? Well, it's depending on, on your needs. And ideally, you want to have an holistic view of your entire landscape. So let's start with the first thing when it comes to enterprise IoT. When we are talking about enterprise IoT, we have uh we are talking about objects in your it environment yep. and um uh, for that you can use defender for endpoint defender for endpoint is part of an e5 license there are different ways to consume that uh license uh, that's license based so that can be uh, the, the, the network discovery can just be used by your uh, clients Mm -hmm. uh, and that's per user licensing, or you can use the service queue. So you are using your service to uh, part of the Defender for Endpoint, and therefore you might uh, use Defender for Cloud P1 or P2. That's regards to the Defender for Endpoint side. When it comes to native OT or IoT, um, that's a different story because that's part of Azure. It's part of Defender for Cloud. It's consumption based. So it's not enabled by having an E5 license. For that, it's consumption based. And that's also based on the number of assets being discovered. So based on your network discovery, um, not necessarily on the number of sensors, but on the assets you've been discovered, um, there is a pricing. And you can identify your devices as being managed and the managed or approved devices will be counted for uh, usage. So that's that's the difference when it comes to licensing. And um, yeah, that's it. That's actually it is. OK. OK. Um, well, that's uh, a lot of information you just told us, uh, which is, of course, great. Um, so what would be just just to give the, the the people a few takeaways so what what would be my starting point so let's say if i want to uh, to use defender for iot what would be my starting point point? and i know you're going to say you could have more but just to see uh, if there are some 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 tips we can we can give to the audience so that they can kickstart their deployment. Yeah, starting with the enterprise IoT side of the house, uh, start enabling uh, network discovery. Um, so yeah. for that you can use or assign your endpoints to to collect that information. Uh, in addition, you can also use the the sensor for that. Um, that, that, that's something we do with Defender for Endpoint, right? For, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's very uh, uh, quick enabled also through the Defender for uh, Endpoint portal for the network scanning part. Yeah. Um, for the OT network, the OT devices, IoT devices, it's different, and that's that requires also some uh, designing. And it starts with knowing your environment in the sense of, okay, which locations, which sites do I have? How is your network topology organized? Because based on your network topology, um, you decide where you need to deploy your sensors. 
so the network, the, the IoT sensors, because they should be placed on the strategic locations where you have full visibility of your OT or IoT devices. And those networks can, of course, be logically separated. So hence the reason why you could maybe need more sensors. Uh, exactly. And, and, and then you have also the, the resilience and the might need uh, two sensors for a particular or having fill over. But that's most important, knowing your network, your physical and logical network layout. And based on that, you can decide where to uh, deploy your uh, sensors. And I would say start small, just start with a pilot and then uh, place, get familiar with the, the sensors. Um, there is also uh, sizing about the sensors. Um, another thing is, are you going to use network appliances, hardware appliances, which hosting these sensors, or are you using uh, uh, Hyper-V, for example, or using containers to uh, host these sensors? Check. And then you will get data, then you will have the inventory, and based on that, um, you will extend it. So that's actually in short uh, where to start and how to start with. Yeah, so a very quick week wrap. Start with enterprise IoT and then move to sensors. Uh... Yeah, well, the, the whether to start where with uh, enterprise IoT or OT depends also on your needs. Eh? If the, requ the request is coming from from the OT uh, side of the house, yeah, there might I... be certain reasons for. Yeah. But, IT is already or more usually in place, and that might be uh, um, yeah easier to start with, where IoT OT requires more um, uh, pre work. Yeah, so let's say the fan for endpoint is already in place. It's really easy to enable the fan for IoT to get those insights from those assets. Yeah, if it's exactly. if if it's OT, I need to deploy sensors, so that's a bit more work. Um, and maybe because those networks are already be maybe be protected a little bit better, it would make sense to start with enterprise stuff. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's 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 all where it starts with starting with with get familiar with how it works, um, building trust on the technology. And once you have it enabled, then you can also integrate it with, for example, your security operations practice. Eh? If you do have a scheme based on Microsoft Sentinel. Um, you can integrate Defender for IoT with Defender uh, for Cloud and going back uh, to Sentinel. Yeah. Where yeah. you have Defender for Endpoint, it always uh, integrates with the data connectors built in to Sentinel. And then you will have the full picture, the holistic picture of your enti entire landscape. And that will be yeah, the ultimate way to keep your entire organization from IT to OT uh, secure. Okay, um, well, I've learned a lot in the last, I think, there are 20 to 25 minutes. So thanks for um, thanks for telling me a great story about uh, Defender for IoT, Ronnie. Um, yeah. Welcome. Uh, hope a pleasure. To, yeah, hope to see you next time again with this another shiny security uh, subject. So um, let's talk soon, and then uh, and then. Uh, yeah, I want to say to, your, to the audience, thanks for listening and I uh, hope to see you next time. Bye bye. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for listening. And uh, as uh, Pim mentioned, see you uh, hopefully soon in the next episode of uh, Tech Talk Dudes. Take care. Bye. Bye. Uh